one of the problem we have, I think, in Canada is we actually never had an innovation policy because innovation is not invention. And I define innovation basically as the application, if you will, of ideas in a way that uh, allows you to either produce new or improved services and products throughout, all the way from coming with new ideas, producing the same for uh, the same or better factors, meaning cost, very purely. Which means that the agent of innovations, by definition, are in the market. So we're either us, individuals, or companies. And therefore, if you want to influence them, you actually have to focus on them and not on us sitting in the university. I would add to that, I, I agree with lack of uh, innovation policy in Canada. And for startups uh, in particular, it is important to have a strong innovative capacity. Uh, and it is important to have access to funding, for example. And if we are thinking about innovation and the type of innovation that starts up are responsible for, it is breakthrough innovation, it is product innovation. And in order to generate that innovation, we have to help startups understand the innovation process, understand the patenting process, for example, and reduce uh, the information asymmetry. Um, uh, increase access to innovation, to information for startups. And uh, if we're thinking about scale uh, and uh, large companies, they are investing a lot of money into R&D, but in terms of productivity of their R&D, uh, as measured by the number of uh, patents, for example, per dollar spent on R&D, then they are less productive than startups. And it's a different type of innovation that they are bringing to the world. It has to do more with incremental innovation or process innovation, where innovation is um, uh, changing the method of production, for example. So uh, they have entirely different needs, and their contribution to the innovative environment is also very different by nature. If, if that's true, do we, uh, are, are patents a, a good representative uh, <clears throat> indicator of innovation or do we need a better, do we need a better set of metrics? It's, uh, it's a measure that is widely used, uh, but it has a lot of flaws, of course. It's not an ideal measure, for example, if you want to rely on patents to compare innovative activity of small and large companies, because they differ in the type of innovation, uh, innovative incremental innovation, for example, um, do not gener does not generate that many patents. So then patent as a measure of innovation will will not be a good measure in that sense. Yeah, and I'd also say it's very um, technically based, right? So you can think of innovation, and, and one of the, the biases I think we have is innovation by default is technical innovation, and that may not be the case. And I think some of the processes, even if they are in technical, but they may not be technical process innovation. So that's one boundary that you want to think about. And if you're thinking about technical innovation, then something like a patent would be more applicable. Um, but what about that small business that isn't a technology company and they're innovating or a software that doesn't lend itself to, to patents? So I think it's just how you scope that out and what is your definition of innovation broadly is technical high growth or, or more generally. And also to add to that, why patents uh, is not a good measure of innovation, because firms patent for different reasons. If you patent for strategic reasons, you build a strong patent port portfolio to block maybe the entry or to strengthen your power, negotiating power, then you have large patent portfolios, but you may not be as innovative in terms of uh, product innovation. I think uh, few people will disagree with me that patent system has to be reformed. It's uh, overburdened, heavily overburdened. And uh, open source software seems like a um, good alternative. I'm wondering, though, if as industries will continue to rely more on open source software, if it will be just, uh, become well, just as overburdened in the future. I think companies are starting to do it, and there's some uh, some noticeable examples. Um, and I'm going to get throw out a non-technology example here. Lego is using open innovation to tremendous success because 
And there may be some of you in this room who love building Lego and grew up with Lego and enjoy it. And um, so they've cultivated that, that whole culture around and individuals around uh, that. And you can buy now, you can buy the Big Bang Theory set because some Lego fan took the pieces, built a set, and then the community voted on it. And they were able to, uh, you know, if they had a certain number, and so they've grown the kind of pool, they've grown those connections. Other companies from a more technology, I know, are putting out grand challenges. Um, Cisco, so not the food Cisco, but the, the technology Cisco, um, does this grand challenges now where they have big problems that they sort of cultivate people in. Sometimes I wonder if it's kind of free labor. So they get a lot of um, students or student projects and they have these people who get excited with the hopes that maybe it'll turn into a job at the company if they are and meanwhile they're they're getting a lot of free labor and working so the end product is innovation innovation to benefit the company but not perhaps the the individuals who are involved how will these companies for example licensing terms change as more other players start using relying on software so patents used to work quite well in the early days it's no longer the case and open software may be a good alternative nowadays but uh, what will what, what will it turn into in the future that's a question